All right, what is up everybody? Today we are going to be playing ourselves a trophy match and it's the trophy match of trophy matches as we are already 4080. Not bad. I had a really bad challenge weekend uh, where I just went 0-3 um, in the modern challenge this weekend. And then I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe this deck isn't as well positioned as I thought. Maybe it's not as good as I thought. And then I played a league Lost my first match, so I'm, you know, to to keep the record straight here, 0-4. I'm like, okay, things are going well. I've had I had some just really rough things kind of happening, like opponents drawing one ofs, that kind of stuff, but whatever, that's magic, you know? After that, I 4-1 that league. I won four in a row, and now I'm on a 4-0 streak and 4-0-8-0 with this deck. So really accepting the variance at the very drastic levels from very good to very bad. So uh, still loving this deck, obviously a lot better these last eight matches versus the first four. But I made a couple minor changes, and this is the list I think I'm going to be locking in for SCG Pittsburgh uh, coming up, well, uh, next weekend, depending on when I get this released. But the tournament will be on September or November 11th and 12th. I'll be backpack streaming it uh, if you're interested. No real huge changes to what I've been playing. I put the Blood Moon back in the main instead of having Shieldred in the main. Um, I added a second Consumes All here for various decks, Hammer, Rhinos, um, and Scales. I think it's pretty good. So trying another one of these out. Still lukewarm on Leyline, but I have a good sideboarding strategy, I think, uh, with this that involves, you know, having it some of the times and not having it uh, some other times. In specific matchups, you know, like being on the play, not having it uh, in the mirror, having it on the draw, kind of experimental stuff like that. But I think I'm getting, a, you know, fine tuning on this deck to figure out exactly my plans for the weekend. And I'm writing a sideboard guide as well in the Patreon. You can check that out below uh, as well as I'll have an article connected to it whenever I get around to it as well. So, all right. I think that's all about the deck. I mean, everything else we've really seen this deck in really high numbers you know i've been playing it a lot you're probably sick of seeing it to be honest i'm sick of seeing it a little bit as well but i gotta get ready for this tournament so my co my content is generally going to be surrounding the tournaments uh as i very much am a co competitive content creator and that's what i focus on in the patreon as well so all right y'all let's get this trophy all right y'all let's do this i am on the draw um, after doing some moto research, uh, as everyone should kind of do, because they're probably doing the same against you, this looks to be uh, like the last deck they played. So it's, it's really interesting that we're playing against that because the Fury Scam is not that good. It can definitely be interacted with, but we do have a play here in the form of Regavan as well and can back it up with Net Not Dead after all. Three for one in yourself, bad. Three for one gaming, good. You know, we'll get to that later. But three for one in yourself is not a good start, um, you know, to play in Magic here. And all they have to have is land, Leyline Binding, you know, second land, and they're able to deal with it. But with having Fury, and that will be more than likely our play anyways, I'm going to keep it. And we might still just three for one ourselves, like, because the upside is definitely there. You get to win the game before they get their feet, uh, you know, on the ground. Nice. Okay. Well, get wrecked us. This is Tron. <laughs> now we just definitely fury them, I would imagine. Um, yeah, and that shows the, the Moto research is not always accurate. So, I mean, it's just got to be the play. I think it's so much better. And we can actually keep one of the Regavans around because we have this... Er, Keep one of the Furies around because we have this extra Regavan. And that could come in handy if we need to like deal with a Karn or something, but obviously not ideal. And then we can dash turn two and try to do the thing. Also find our one Blood Moon in the main. That'd be excellent. We'll try to get Swamps with these. And see what we can do against good old turn three trial. Oh yeah, they have Dismembers, don't they? Of course they do. <laughs> <laughs> I think we still have to risk it. They usually don't play that many of them. Um, and, you know, just playing a Regavan there, I, I think it's less powerful. We might just, well, just be dead. Or we might have to top deck Blood Moon and hope for the best. Corping Whales, no good. Yeah, I guess they 
can Tron up, but they can only use two mana. So we got one turn to basically find that Blood Moon. Otherwise, I think we're in trouble. Maybe a Grief would be okay. Douthy. Okay. Not that good. So we'll just keep with the aggressive plan and pretend that their hand is all lands. They did not mulligan, I don't believe. Or maybe it was just a six. Yeah, it was to six. Okay, so now I can do this plus Douthy. Oh, wow. Okay, they came to game. Well, now I can just cast Dothy, and I have to hope my beautiful 3-2 can go the distance. Remember, we're on the perfect game uh, plan here. You know, we're trying to not lose a game, so this is already just devastating. <laughs> All right. Devastating might be a strong choice of words there, but... Okay. That's pretty good. Would have loved to be able to steal that from their hand and play it ourselves. And now we can't deal damage to them. They can blow up whatever we play, so we can't play any more threats. Ugh. Yeah, we're dead. <sighs> we have to wait for them to blow up this O stone and hope this ring just eviscerates their life totals but once again not looking great all right there's the tower to essentially add one mana and then draws smart sequencing relic doesn't matter too much yeah just uh, you know you're gonna sacrifice it just exile it it's my pet peeve okay and they're not doing it never mind all right well now we get to put them in a interesting spot can attack see if they want to draw a card plus destroy it or if they want to wait till end step honestly both would make sense i don't know if i can play anything or i just play the grief i think i'm most afraid that they'll not pop the o stone i think but then that does put them in you know a decent amount of pressure here so it looks like they are going to be popping it and i get to play grief i feel okay about that Okay, let's see. I do get that stone. Not that it matters too much. And we'll go get a swamp. Grief them. Hopefully they only have one threat. And they brick on their next, you know, ooh, four cards next turn. That's not good. All right. Wow. I mean, that is that is the dream, but they just have so many more cards. Spin. So I can put them to seven. The ring will put them to four. That's still rough. And yeah, that's with them bricking, you know. Them ulamogging changes the math a little bit. One or two cards, maybe. Wow, it takes the land. Okay, they must have an answer for grief, but... All right. <laughs> Show off. Show off. I got to remember that because I don't know if anyone remembers the Christian Calcano jake beardsley line of when uh you know dothy came down then thought sees calcano calc just kind of threw his hands like not in like a you know unsportsmanlike way just kind of a joking a joking manner and then you know if you thought sees away the ulamog you just then get to cast ulamog and win the game immediately so i gotta remember that for next game that's kind of why dothy is actually okay all right our streak's over. We might as well end the video right here. All right. We for sure want Blood Moon. We're not going to sideboard a lot here. Hmm. Could bring in Shieldreds for the ring since it is... Yeah, since it is loss of life, I think that's probably okay. Now, cards that are bad. A few of them. The Bolts, the Terminates are the weakest do i have to leave in one it's kind of looking like i do oh wait bone crushers are good that's right yeah bone crushers for the ring i like so we'll bring these in i probably don't even need croxa but i'm i'm iffy on croxa and if i'm iffy on croxa i think i should keep it and probably not bring in a shieldred because the Bone Crusher is just for that ring turn where you can push through some damage. Maybe that's not even better 
than this. You know, like, Bone Crusher Giant is kind of medium. It, it's also just, like, my 15th card in the, in the sideboard as well. It's not a card I love. Yeah, I should keep all Shieldreds in, because I do got to have some way to win the game in case they, um bridge me honestly that could be a design flaw as well not having an out to bridge but you know croxa shieldreds bone crusher is, is not a great plan but it's also tough for them to do that i think yeah you can bowmaster you can target reflections with bowmasters you can definitely get there with a bridge in play it's just a lot harder all right, it's for sure those four. Maybe just a Bowmaster. Bowmaster is pretty weak. Fable is also kind of weak. And so is Fury. Actually, I'm going to go with Fury. Take out one of those and go with this. Okay. Love to be on the play, and I'd like to do more scamming. It's less scamming, but we're going to keep. Now the question is, do we want to thought seize them right away to try to get something like a map? Or do we want a Ragavan so we can connect, and even if they have a dismember, we can uh, um, then Ragavan again? I think... I think the whole map premise of these lines of play is the reason to thoughts is here because you could easily keep two Tron lands, map, no other green source, no other plan to get Tron. And that's a good hand, you know? So we are just going to do that. It's not seize him to death. Doesn't mean if we top deck grief that it's not going to be as good. Yep. <laughs> I mean, that's exactly what they have. So I think I'm going to do that and hope to beat the other. I mean, I'm still in trouble, to be honest. Like, they can either naturally draw it or Karn is going to be good. Even Ballista is not bad. But we're going to take them off the Tron that they immediately can get and watch them top deck it on turn three like Tron should do, you know? All right. Orcish Bowmasters. We're just going to spend this opportunity or take this opportunity to dash. Hopefully they do not have the member of the disc variety. Okay. <laughs> they had it. All right. Let's say go. Probably going to be ballista time. Yep. Now it's going to be interesting what we do here. Maybe it's not that interesting. I think I just Bowmaster, and then once they go to try to kill by Bowmaster, Undying Evil, and then I can play Ragavan. Yeah, that's probably just a play. There's also a thought to not Undying this and getting a dash in, but I don't think that's better. Does suck that I don't get the first one here. Here's the Undying Evil. That one goes upstairs. And we'll do some hoping and praying that they don't have Natural Tron or we are dead. We need them to go Forest Go next turn. No Tower of Power? Okay, good start, good start. Not saying go. I like that less. Sylvan Scrying. Okay, I, I like that quite a bit. That was best possible once they started tapping mana. Yikes. All right, well. We might need to start hitting something off their deck, but that's the thing about... Uh, Rakdos or you know Regavanning Tron is you don't have that many great hits like that is an excellent hit but there's no way we're gonna get that much mana so I'm gonna play one of these lands sacrifice it and thin it a bit yikes there it is I 
Okay, what are they gonna get? Whatever it is, we're in trouble. For one mana. I mean, we can just deal with Karn, but yeah, there's the bridge. Yeah, maybe we're too soft to, to bridge in this list. I mean, to be fair, they still have a lot of cards in hand, so. And we can draw a Thought Caesar or Grief or something to make that problem go away. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, so that gets around the bridge problem. We're going to go here. Got to deal with Karn. And let's... Hope Shieldred is enough. Sylvan Scrying. I could go get Takanuma. Then I can't cast Shieldred. So instead, I think we just play. Ah, I didn't need to play the land, I don't think. But I'm going to anyways. Let's play a Shieldred. And we'll say go. And hope they don't have Oblivion Stone. Uh-oh. <laughs> Hola, Mog. Uh-oh. We're dead, chat. We are dead. Well, we drew pretty bad at the end as well, but I don't know if there was much we were going to do. You know, I mean, we just needed Blood Moons. I think we kept them off Tron the best we could. It bought us two to three turns. And honestly, from a thought season on turn one, that's about all you can hope for. So now it'll be interesting to see if they even cast the bridge. I'm gonna take it. They got the list on dead anyways, so no point in playing around that. So now they have the choice between playing bridge or not. And if they don't play bridge, I can play Ragavan and try to hit something off their deck. Oh, no. <laughs> I clicked right through it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Comedy of errors. Dang it. To be fair, I don't think there would have been much I could have gotten, but would have gave me a better chance than just dying on the spot. Uh, whoops. Well, I like to bring you all the trophy matches, y'all. Not just the the ones where I win. And honestly, we've had pretty good trophy match streaks um, so far. But yeah, we were going to be cold to that bridge anyways. I think Tron is still pretty good, you know. And I think if we have three Blood Moons, it's better. But just having the two, definitely not ideal. Maybe the Bone Crusher or something could be more Blood Moons as well. They've been okay, and they come in in other matchups, but uh, otherwise they've been a little medium. Taka Numa. Okay. Um, well, I guess I just have to hit something big off their deck. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, man. If me not... Pl no, I did play a land last turn. I was going to say, if I, like, hit an Ulamog and I can't cast it because I didn't play the land. Six, seven, eight. Karn liberated? Ah, <laughs> oh, indestructible. Not cool. Not cool. Yeah, I mean, I probably would not have hit anything big off them last turn or they would have played whatever it was. But still, that's not a good reasoning to uh, make misclicks. Bone Crusher, eh? So close. So close. All right. GG, no trophy for us today, y'all. Um, You know, outside of that, I think I played uh, Scam, Amulet, Merktide, and Yogg. I'm not positive about the first two, but... Um, definitely Scam and then Yogg for the last two, or Scam and Amulet for the last two. 
Not really anything I would change going forward quite yet. Um, you know, it's it's a deck that has a high level of volatility. You know, you have these extremely good weekends. You have these extremely medium ones. When things don't go your way, in general, that's usually not the type of modern magic I love. Um, I like to be in control of my destiny a little bit more with the decks I play. But the upside on this deck is just through the roof. Um... And it's still a pretty consistent draw. So more often than not, you know, I'm on the side where I can piece some draw together, um, you know, to be a functioning strategy versus those games where you go for the grief scam, they have the hate, and then you, you're stuck on a one lander and you don't play magic. Those are the style of decks I usually really hate, but that doesn't happen as often. So anyways, thank you so much for watching everyone. Please like, comment, share the video, hit that bell. Uh, to be notified for more videos, as well as uh, join the Patreon if you're interested in the sideboard guide for this list. So thank you so much, everyone, and we'll see you on the next video.